Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. It's been a while. So in this video, I thought I'd do a quick review on the Kinesis keyboard. I've been using this for a couple of years now, and recently Kinesis sent me another one, which I'm super grateful for. So I thought I'd do a quick kind of review and share how I use it and why I think it's one of the best investments you can make if you're a programmer or somebody who uses the keyboard for a very long time. Now, there are other options out there and you know a lot of people swear by them, but I generally think that the way this is built is actually one of the best you can possibly get. And it's no surprise that if you go on Reddit or some other platforms, you see some people saying that I've been using this keyboard since the 95 or something like that, and they never really changed. And there's a reason why. So if you're a programmer, you're probably spending 10 hours or probably like, I don't know, eight to 10 hours every day coding. And most programmers will actually use a normal keyboard, maybe the Apple keyboard or some other keyboard, just a mechanical keyboard. And here I have the Apple keyboard, which is this one here. And I liked this keyboard for a long time and I've used it for years actually. This is probably the only keyboard I ever owned by Apple. And it worked well for a long time, but the thing is, if I move this out of the way for a bit and I put this one, notice like when I'm typing what happens, you see that my arms are already twisted and pretty much like my fingers are all close to each other and, and it's not natural position, like I'm already twisting my muscles in a way to just type. Well, this feels nice when you type, it's just easy to press on. The fact that it's kind of squeezing your body to just type a couple things, if you, if you use it for like an hour or two, it's not a big deal, but if you're spending like 10 hours on this, you quickly start to notice that there's some pains here and there in your body, especially your wrist. And so a, a backstory for this, um, I spent years of my life playing guitars and bass, and so I already kind of had some pain in my wrist, especially like this arm here. So if I do this and I'm playing music, there's already already had pain here. I didn't know what to do with it for a long time, and I thought just because I'm playing music. So when I switched to this keyboard, I noticed that my pain started to go away. And even though I had like another split keyboard actually, but what really was different is this uh, thumb cluster. It's, it allowed me to really shift most of the things I use with my pinky to my thumb, which is a more, or like a stronger, finger. I would say like a year and so after using it, my wrist pain went away. There's no more pain anymore. And I can really comfortably type for hours and hours and not feel anything anymore. And, and this specific keyboard is um, the one you're seeing here. If you go to the Kinesis website, the one I'm using is the Kinesis 360 keyboard, which is the professional version. Essentially, it's a ZMK powered uh, keyboard, like the firmware is ZMK, which is an open source uh, framework to configure a keyboard it connects through Bluetooth. There's another one which is a bit cheaper that is wired. I don't think it's ZMK, but the one I'm using is the ZMK. So to learn about ZMK, you can go to this website. And if you go to the documentation, here you can probably you know read about it and figure out how to configure pretty much everything in it. And so I'm not gonna walk you through the process of how to configure every single thing, but I'm gonna show you some things that I've done to make it a bit more kind of to my flow in a way, to make to, to work with my workflow. There are a couple things you need to do to prepare to configure it, but before we even go there, I wanna kinda demo some of the things I've done. So there's this concept of hyperkey, which is essentially um, pressing shift, control, option, and command at the same time, which opens up a new layer of kind of shortcuts that you can use on your keyboard. Because there's nothing else that uses that. If you press hyper, which all these buttons, then with any other combinations, like let's say hyper P or hyper O, etc you can use that to trigger anything essentially. What I've done is I essentially mapped this delete button here to hyper. So every time I press hyper and T, I can open up my terminal. Hyper B, it will essentially open up my browser, etc. And there are different things like that. So for example, hyper um, nine would open up Spotify. And there are things that I've done specifically for the terminal. So if I open up my terminal with hyper T, and you see I have a Tmux session on. So usually to switch between Tmux sessions, you have to press prefix, which in my case, it's control A and then two, for example, control A, one, etc. So what I've done is I mapped this page down here to essentially become control A. So now I can just press this and then switch. So one less buttons to click, which is nice. And the second thing I've done is uh, map this button here to open up Raycast, 
So anytime I press three here, it just opens Raycast. Originally, it was just option space for me. So again, one less things to press. I have this button here, two and three to switch between desktops. There are other things as well. So for example, and here, it's essentially shift command. So if you have VS code, for example, or something like that, if you use that, you can press and and P to open up like your command palette, which is really useful. I think this keyboard also supports like up to five different computers. So you can connect to like five different computers. I use this with both my laptops, the work one and the personal one, and even my iPad, and it just connects easily. There's no more problems. I know that when I bought this some time ago, uh, I had some problems with Bluetooth, but with recent firmware updates, the whole thing was fixed. And also I was like using it incorrectly. So I would like, every time I finish working, I would turn it off. So what I learned is that like, you can keep it on, it will just shut down by itself. So whenever you turn it off, you kind of have to reconnect again and just kind of pair the two pieces. So you don't actually need to do that. When you're done, just leave it alone. It will shut down. And when you come back, it will just, as soon as you press something, it will turn on and it will stay connected. So battery wise, uh, I can use this for almost like maybe a week without even recharging it and it works perfectly. And so the way to configure this is you have to clone this repo provided by the Kinesis Corporation. And then once you clone it, you should go to this directory, I believe, and then here, and you can just customize the different buttons. They do actually provide interface for this, like a GUI, which is this one. And here you see it's already kind of found my fork. However, I've noticed that this interface here is not like the best. And there's another one that is even more uh, feature complete. And it's this one here. I'll leave a link in the description. So here you see, for example, this button, which is this one here. If you click on it, you see it like how I configured it, which is essentially command, control, option, and shift. And then I have this one here configured to command option. And this page down here, it's actually um, the prefix key for Tmux. But when you tap it, it's still page down. And for this one here, which is this guy here, if you tap it, it becomes escape. And if you uh, hold it, it becomes right control. So this is actually pretty interesting because let's say I'm open up here Vim and just open up some code. If you, let's say, do column here, you see that we have this command line. Well, the original one, the original escape button was here. So I have to press here to exit, right? And that requires my pinky. But in most cases, all I have to do is just tap. I'm not looking to keep pressing escape, right? Hold it. So if I open up this one, I can just tap here and you're good to go. It's gone. That's pretty handy. And another thing is if I want to switch between Tmux, as, as I said, I can just press and hold and then just go here, press and hold and go here. And it just works. There are so many things you can do with this. So for example, uh, there are multiple layers. You have the keypads. So essentially you can activate this and you can use here as like your numpad. You have your function row, which is F1 to F12. You have mod, which allows you to connect to different machines, Bluetooth. So behavior, essentially, uh, a good example for that would be this control, which if I tap, it's escape, and if I hold, it's control. And you can customize that here. So if I open up this one, here you see that uh, the bindings, uh, if I hold, it's a key press, and if I tap, it's also a key press. So there's two options here. You can set the timing for how long you want to key press before you activate. And the way I use that thing, I can go back to this layers thing. If I press on this, see this uh, and hm that's essentially the this behavior that i just created so clicking on that you have this hold you can make it whatever you want and then you have the tap again tap here for me is escape and yeah so you can make this as customizable as you want more things i've done here uh, i have this home button um, map to delete and then this one to backspace and then i have um, this page up is map to option and then also have another option here. And I have the caps lock is actually also mapped to um, command. And the reason is because I rarely use this caps lock anyways. And so I just want to map it to something different. And that's pretty much how I'm using it at the moment. There are so many things you can do. I'm very interested in figuring out ways to leverage macros even more. One thing I want to eventually do maybe in future videos is just configure this side of the keyboard to be kind of a controller for my video editor editing software. Maybe use this to kind of control DaVinci Resolve or it would be super nice. Like imagine yourself just moving this out of the way and you're just editing this way. It's definitely a lot more comfortable. So to update your firmware, once you finish configurations, what you need to do is you can press on this button here 
and this will open up your build. So what's happening is um, this interface will update the code for you and then it will run the build script. And once you get here, all you have to do is just download the firmware. And when you do that, you see that you have this zip file. You can extract it and go inside. Here you see you have this left one and the right one. So as you can guess, the left one will go to the left side of the keyboard and the right to the right. Once you get here, you need to plug in your keyboard. I got this guy here. And as you can see, you have this USB here. You can plug it. And then and what you have to do is just press mode one. And this essentially when you start seeing this green light, this means that this is kind of um, connected now. So you see here, we have this Advantage 360 Pro. And if you open up in a tab, these are the files that exist on this side of the keyboard. And then you have these ones here. So all you have to do is just take this guy and just put it there, copy it. And you can do the same thing for the right side. You have to start with the left side, I believe. I'm not sure if this is how it's done correctly now, but I've done it either way and it worked. So you do it for this side and then you have to do it for the other side. And then once you're done, essentially your firmware is updated. So yeah, um, that's pretty much the whole flow. It's pretty amazing what you can do with it. Like I really like this idea that I can switch easily with Tmux. The hyper key is just a powerful thing, man. It's I pretty much can switch between any app I want without actually needing to use the mouse at all. And I know there are other ways to kind of manage your windows, but this for me has been the best. So for example, as you know, I use this um, uh, Raycast. And the way I do all of that stuff is I have this extensions here. And so, as I said, hyper is delete. So let's say I have Kiri, which is my terminal. I can add a hotkey here, which is hyper T. So I pretty much assign this to my terminal. I do the same for my browser, which I'm using arc. So hyper B, and I just keep doing that. And then for window management, I have hyper Z and hyper X. Here you see, for example, we have window, and I believe got this one, which is centered Z for the first two third. So if I'm on this browser, I can just press hyper Z, it takes you here, hyper let's say X it takes me here, or it moves it to the right side. For my terminal, I usually code like this. So I'm still just using the keyboard and I didn't really need to use any special applications to manage my windows. It's all my keyboard and it's all just one hyper key away from doing the thing. So that's pretty much how I've been using it. Again, I highly recommend that you check out this keyboard. And one trick actually, ask your company if they are able to kind of cover the cost for this keyboard. I've noticed it's a very expensive keyboard, obviously, so you have to think twice before you invest such money on it. But I've found that a lot of companies will be more than happy to just pay for it if you tell them. So don't be scared to do that. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you're all well, and I'll see you in the next one.